We're basically social machines. That's what we are designed to do. As a matter of fact, we cannot help but engage with the entire world around us in a socially complex manner. And we do that through emotions. We, we give off emotions and we read emotions. And we tend to think emotions are just expressions on the face and the head, but, but they're not. They're the rhythms of our entire body. It's our breath, it's our heartbeat, it's the levels of tension in our body. We're machines that express these emotions and we're a machine that can't help but read these emotions in everything around us. So the field of social and emotional robotics is really interesting because there's so many disparate pieces in so many different fields that are contributing to the evolution of this of these artifacts. And one area is research, is academics who are using robots to better understand what it is to be human, who are who are exploring very niche applications. There's also the toy industry who, you know, just wants to make a, a buck. And they've suddenly realized that making toys that are interactive and ex express simple emotions and engage socially are, are really quite powerful. We wanted to design something that told this story, that robotics is becoming something different from what we knew it to be. We, we didn't want to have this steel, factory-produced, stiff thing. We wanted something that was handmade. We wanted something that was very human, that, that looked like almost arts and craft. We wanted something that, that you wanted to touch, that looked like something that was made with a lot of love and care. My background is in, in puppetry, as well as movement and dance, and um, we felt this is great, let's just use that. Let's actually make a puppet that is, that is animated by hand, like a little doll, like a child playing with a doll. Because already we have that world of, of that, that wondrous world of, of the inanimate coming to life, you know, and, we, and all that expression and all that playfulness. And already people love it when you've got a little character that's coming to life. And, and people are drawn into that and start laughing and start playing with it. So we're like, we're almost there just with that. But let's give it just a touch of autonomy, just a little bit of a robotic element and see what happens. And this is, this is the talent of, of puppeteers and animators. Um, they can take, you know, a, a stick or a, or a leaf or a, or a sock and quite easily make you laugh, and that's an emotion, or make you really feel sorry for it. And the, they're very, very specific cues that do that. So what we wanted to do was give people a, a taste, give, put, in people's hands, something that made them go, ah, all right, I get it. I'm very easily tricked into falling in love with this thing or feeling sorry for it or being quite creeped out by it. That's interesting. What kind of world is it gonna be where we have these things around us, whether they're toys or whether it's my computer talking to me or whether it's my sat nav in my car that, that I'm starting to get sucked into an emotional relationship with. The heart robot is, in some ways, a very obvious way of communicating this world of emotional social robotics. But the future may not necessarily be little humanoid robots walking around that are expressing emotions and interacting with us in an emotional and socially clever way. It may be other objects around us, you know, it may be our, our laptop that um, understands that we're getting really frustrated at it and, and goes, oh, okay, I'll, I, I won't just keep repeating this error message to you. You know, it could be our mobile phone that, that knows that we're really upset and at a funeral and, and won't interrupt us with a call. Um, it, emotional and social intelligence could appear in many different ways in society, and this as well raises interesting questions. Does, does it make our world a much more emotionally sophisticated place? when we're actually able to relate to our artifacts the way we relate to one another? Or does it make us value emotional and social relationships less because they're just these artifacts that do it as well and we can always switch them off? These questions are completely unanswered. 